the International Space Station was launched on November 20, 1998. It was created as part of a joint effort between five agencies, including NASA from the US, Roscosmos from Russia, JAXA from Japan, ESA from Europe, and CSA from Canada. For 22 years, it has served as the primary facility for numerous scientific research missions studying the Moon, Mars, and outer space. Always occupied by international personnel, the ISS has been uninterruptedly supplied by spacecraft. After July 2011, Russian cosmonauts and astronauts began their journeys to the station exclusively from the Russian Soyuz rockets launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome located in Kazakhstan. On October 11, 2018, for the first time in the 22-year-long history of the ISS, a crew failed to reach orbit after lifting off. A Russian Soyuz FG rocket commanded by NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovchanin had a booster failure that led them to abort the mission and safely eject through the launch escape system. The incident, which occurred months after another Soyuz launch malfunction, took place during a time of political and military tension between the US and Russia. Both governments accused each other of sabotage. For a moment, it seemed that cooperation towards the ISS was going to be halted. But the camaraderie between Russian and American astronauts bonded and stayed together. October 11th, 2018. On their way to the launch site of Baikonur Cosmodrome, the two crew members of Expedition 57, Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexei Ovchinin and NASA astronaut Nick Haig, gazed at the horizon at 1400 hours. Everything looked normal. The sun was as bright as ever, and it was windy. The trustworthy Russian Soyuz MS-10 rocket that would take them to the International Space Station awaited them in its launch position at Complex 1. The polished white painting of the aircraft blinded everyone that looked directly at it. The pre-launch routine for Soyuz concluded without any problems. For two hours, personnel double-checked the astronaut's spacesuit integrity, comms, hatch seals, and control systems. While they waited, Haig and Ovchinin listened to some music and said goodbye to their families. At 1440 local time, the Soyuz MS-10 carrying the two-man team lifted off. If everything went well, it would be a four-orbit, six-hour flight to the International Space Station. Everything went as usual. The rocket's first stage began separating from the central core stage alongside the four liquid-fueled strap-on boosters, and the Soyuz lifted off successfully. Nevertheless, two minutes after liftoff, the crew felt something strange. Unexpected weightlessness surprised them. At this moment, long-range tracking cameras from the complex showed the strap-ons on what appeared to be multiple other objects falling away from the rocket. Ovchinin said to Russian Mission Control, quote, Failure of the booster. We are in weightlessness. Seconds later, the NASA TV livestream video of the launch abruptly cut off. It was a blackout that alarmed the media worldwide. Ovchernin and Haig, dismayed, concluded that there had been a problem with the ascent stage, after a booster emergency light began blinking under the control panel. Abort motors fired to life, and the Soyuz MS-10 began to rapidly decelerate, plunging back into the lower atmosphere. As the thrusters pulled the spacecraft away from the rocket, the crew entered into a dangerous ballistic trajectory that resulted in seven times the normal force of gravity loads as they re-entered the atmosphere. Ovchernin reported to Mission Control, quote, We are getting ready for the G-loads. G-load is 6.7. Before their capsule lost contact with Control, the Russian cosmonaut said, quote, We are feeling rotation. The G-load is going down. G-load is 2.72 and going down. Search and rescue teams were immediately dispatched to assist the two astronauts when their capsule landed. It took Ovchernin and Haig 30 minutes to land in a ballistic trajectory. Both men stayed calm during the entire affair. The crew landed 20 kilometers east of Zerzhkazgan, Kazakhstan, a usual staging site for standard Soyuz re-entries. Helicopter recovery crews extracted them safely to Baikonur City Hospital, where they were reported with good health. Dmitry Rogozin, director of Roscosmos, explained to news outlets that a state commission would investigate the booster malfunction's causes, but no official footage was immediately released. NASA released a similar statement. The Soyuz MS-10 mission carrying the crew of Expedition 57 took place during a period of political and military tension between the US and Russia. In 2016, 
Suspicions of Russian involvement in the elections in which Donald Trump emerged victorious caused civil unrest. Some accused President Putin of interfering in national matters. In 2018, months before the Soyuz incident, the U.S. and Russian forces clashed in Syria, prompting the U.S. to expel all Russian diplomats of the country, accusing them of espionage. As a result, tensions rose between the two countries when the Soyuz incident occurred, blaming each other for sabotage. Nonetheless, NASA and Roscosmos focused on understanding the reasons behind the crash itself and began an investigation. The commission got to work in October 2018. Weeks later, it was concluded that the unsuccessful mission was related to a damaged side booster that was reconnected to the core during the stage separation. On October 31st, 2018, the commission issued an official statement concluding that, quote, a ball joint supporting the errant side booster was deformed during assembly, preventing proper separation of the side booster, while the sensor and separation motor had worked properly. <laughs>